In this video, I'm going to talk to you about muscles of the shoulder complex. I've got two anatomical models I'm going to use. One where I can point to the bony landmarks where the muscles attach, and the second model is where some of the muscles are located. They're not all attached to this model, but um, I will discuss the majority of the muscles. So I think it's probably a good idea to start with the rotator cuff, and there are four muscles. The first one, which is one of the most commonly irritated within the shoulder region, is the supraspinatus. It will attach from the supraspinous fossa in here, and then it will go through the space, if I show you on this pointer, goes through and attaches onto the greater tubercle of the humerus. Okay, so that's where it goes. So it's a controller of abduction for the shoulder. So when the supraspinatus contracts, the humerus is going to abduct. Potentially it's for the first 10 to 15 degrees because the deltoid muscle, which is not located on here, which is a large muscle that will control all movements of the shoulder apart from adduction, will then continue the abduction motion. With the deltoid, we've got a posterior fiber, we've got a mid fiber, and we've got an anterior fiber. The posterior fibers will externally rotate the humerus, the anterior fibers will medially rotate, mid fibers will abduct. Also, the anterior fibers will allow flexion, and the posterior fibers will allow extension as well. But let's move on to the remaining rotator cuff. We've got the infraspinatus muscle here, which takes up the infraspinous fossa along here. So think of a word, okay? Infra below the spine. So infraspine fossa, a depression. So this space is where the infraspinatus will attach and then travels to the posterior part of the greater tubercle. And you can see this blending of this tendinous structure along here. It is mainly for external rotation of the humerus or lateral rotation. It also assists in horizontal extension. And it's one of the stabilizers stabilizes of the shoulder as you abduct. The other muscle is teres minor. You can just see it here. It's like a slip of a muscle along here. I'll turn this around so I can use the end of it. So the teres minor comes along. So that will attach onto the lateral or auxiliary border and blends with the infraspinatus and attaches inferior to the attachment of the infraspinatus. Again, this is a muscle that will assist external rotation and horizontal extension of the humerus working alongside. The fourth one of the rotator cuff will be the subscapularis and it fills the whole space of the subscapular wall here. Okay, so it fills the whole anterior surface. And then it travels across onto the lesser tubercle. There is a bony landmark just here. So that's called the lesser tubercle. And then again, the subscapularis will come down and blend into this whole rotator cuff structures along here. That muscle is mainly for medial rotation, but again, it also stabilizes the humeral head during abduction. So they are the four rotator cuff muscles. Let's talk about some other ones. You can see this muscle here if I turn it round. So this is a larger one because it is also called teres, but we've got teres minor and we've got teres major. So the word teres means round. So teres major will go anteriorly to the humerus along here, okay? And it's almost like medial. You can't really see it there because it looks like it blends in. But this is the bicipital groove coming down. And this would be where the long head of biceps attaches. But the teres major will come in medial to that. And what that one does, it is a muscle that will internally rotate. And I use a mnemonic, major in, minor out. Okay, so major in, minor out. And that seems to work quite well for me. The biceps long head comes up. Think about biceps, two heads. You've got a bicep long head that comes up through, okay, and it invaginates the joint, so it goes through, you can't see it, but it goes right inside to attach to a little tubercle called the supraglenoid tubercle. So we've got a biceps long head, the short head would come onto the coracoid process, so we've got the short head and the long head coming down, and then where the bicep comes onto the uh, forearm, 
it, it, will, it will go into the radial tuberosity and there's also like a little fascia called the bicipital aponeurosis. The main action of the biceps will be not flexion of the elbow or shoulder flexion, it is mainly to supinate. Okay, so it supinates elbow flex, shoulder flex. I call it the food muscle. So if you imagine you've got an apple, you turn it, so you supinate, so you elbow flex and your shoulder flex, okay, the bicep. Bicep tears from its long head, you'll end up with what we call a Popeye arm. If it ruptures from its insertion point, you will not be able to supinate the forearm as part of that. Other muscles we've got, um, onto the medial border along here, the medial border, we've also got the rhomboids, the rhomboids minor, which comes from uh, C7 and T1, comes down and blends in. And then we've got rhomboid major, which comes from T2 to T5 from the thorax, and it comes down and blends around that sort of area. And the rhomboid is mainly for retraction of the scapula, and it can assist in some elevation. And also when the scapula is rotated, if my arms are overhead like this, and I pull my arms down, then the rhomboids will be involved in pulling the arm down. And that works with other muscles called the pectoralis minor and also the levator scapulae. And if I lift my arms over the head, then that will be by the upper trapezius, working in conjunction with the lower trapezius, working in conjunction with the serratus anterior. Now serratus, you can see, a serratus will come onto the first eight to nine ribs and it will attach onto the medial border and the inferior angle around here. Okay, so that muscle, you can't really see it because you can see it from the side, so it's like a serrated muscle here, but it controls the scapular motion. So when I lift my arms over my head, it's mainly the serratus that controls that motion. And also when I protract, it's the serratus that will assist that. It works with the upper trapezius. Again, the upper trapezius is not on here, but the upper trapezius will come from a bump on the head called the occipital protuberance here, and it's got a line called the superior nuchal line along here. Then it goes down to the C2, and then it comes all the way down to C7 by a ligament called the ligamentum nuchae, or the nuchae ligament, and it goes all the way down to T12. And then we've got the upper fibers that will be mainly onto the clavicular area, and they will elevate. We have the mid fibers that will retract, and we've got the lower fibers that will depress the shoulder girdle. So that will be the trapezius. The levator scapulae is also a muscle that works in conjunction to a point with, levate, uh, with trapezius. And that will be from C1 to C4, transverse processes of the cervical spine. And it will go to the superior angle of the scapula in here. So if it contracts, you will get elevation of the shoulder girdle. And also the scapula, like I said, is rotated. It will pull the arms down working with the next muscle, which is the pectoralis minor. Okay, so on this coracoid process, we've also got the short head I mentioned. We've also, short headed bicep that is. We've also got the coracobrachialis, which is a muscle from here, and it goes to the medial side of the arm. And then that muscle weakly flexes the shoulder. But the pec minor is what I wanted to talk to you about, is it goes from the coracoid, and attaches to the third to fifth rib. So the pectoralis minor will be responsible for protraction and depression of the shoulder girdle. If you've got pec minor, we've also got pectoralis major, which is the large muscle of the chest wall here. And then it inserts into a tendon that's about two inches and it attaches lateral to the bicipital groove here. That muscle is mainly the horizontal flexor muscle here, okay, like you're doing a bench press motion. It will also be involved in internal rotation. And certain fibers, for instance, the sternal fibers here will pull my arm down, and the clavicular fibers will pull my arm up, okay, towards 90 degrees. So we've also got the pectoralis muscles as well. We've got the triceps long head, which attaches from the infraglenoid tubercle of the scapula around here. And then the uh, long head here will blend in with the other two heads to insert onto the olecranon process of the ulna, 
which is of the elbow. The triceps will be mainly involved in elbow extension, but the long head will also assist in extension of the humerus and adduction of the humerus, okay, or the shoulder joint. We've also got the latissimus dorsi. The only part it attaches to on the scapula is the inferior angle. So there's, it crosses over here. You can't really see it on this one, um, but it will just cross over here. So it comes from the lower six thoracic spine. It goes to the, all the lumbar, the sacrum. It goes to the iliac crest. It attaches onto the thoracolumbar fascia, the lower three or four ribs, and then it crosses onto the inferior angle of the scapula here, and then it rotates almost 180 degrees to insert on the base of the bicipital groove. So it comes in low, so it's, it's right up deep in here, and it comes down onto this sort of area in here. Now, the muscle of the lats is mainly for adduction, mainly for extension, but also they will internally rotate. So when we internally rotate, I have a mnemonic. So I call it salt and pepper. The S, the A, the L, the T, and pepper. So the S is the subscapularis, which is the main internal rotator. The A is the anterior deltoid, which I've mentioned. The L is the latissimus dorsi, which I've just mentioned. The T is teres major. And the last one will be the pectoralis major. So that is the majority of the muscles and the bony landmarks they attach to. I didn't cover all the muscles, but that's the majority of. I hope you've enjoyed the video and thank you for watching.